Well, I've coded this up and I'm now in position to run off some results. But the danger is I can generate too many results and get completely swamped by the information. So I've got to be selective about what I show. Now, to my mind, the most important parameters, well, firstly, how will the wheel perform over different types of soil? Secondly, wheel sizes. And the third main parameter is the inflation pressures. And for these different parameters, I can, for different wheel loads, I can look at the sinkage and the soil resistance. Now, don't bother to look at the actual numbers which are generated, which aren't of the greatest interest, but look at the trends. So we can, for example, see, are we better off with a skinny or a fat tar? Or should we be running at low or high inflation pressures? And this, to me, is far more meaningful. I've considered three tar sizes, ranging from the standard skinny tar, which is OEM on the Defender 750 R16, up to a 305 70 R16. And this guy is massively bigger, the tread width over 70% greater, and a useful increase in the OD. You'd think this one would perform infinitely better under all conditions, but we will see. I've also taken a range of soils. Now, don't worry too much about these numbers, which are the sinkage parameters, but suffice it to say, the bigger the number, the stronger the soil. And so this is a fairly average sort of clay loam. This turns out to be a very stiff sand, whereas this one is actually a very weak sand, almost like bull dust. I've taken a couple of farm soils, at uh, differing moisture contents and also a very firm clay. We'll see how they perform. I plotted out the pressure versus sinkage relationship for these soils and looking for example at say a three inch sinkage which is quite high you see we got one very strong soil one medium strong but these three at the bottom are really quite soft. The maximum ground pressure here is about 15 psi so these soils are going to struggle to make any impression on tars being driven over them. We aren't going to get the desired flat spot and hence there's going to be a lot of resistance when we drive over them. We're likely to get bogged down. And this is first set of results. Incidentally, everything here is in imperial units because um, that's what the soil state comes in. And I've decided to stay with it. I'm plotting the tar sinkage against the wheel load. And I've taken the medium clay soil, a low tar pressure, 12 PSI, and the three uh, tar sizes. And at low wheel loads, we get the greater sinkage on the skinny tar, as you'd expect, and about half on the widest tar. But at this uh, wheel load, about uh, 600 uh, pounds, we get the break point and on the skinny tar, we then start to develop a flat spot. This doesn't happen on the other tars until we get higher wheel loads, in this case over a thousand pounds, and then we get the flat spot. But look at what's happened. You see that by now we have the lowest sinkage on the skinny tar because we've got the biggest flat spot. And here I've plotted out the tar shape for the same run. Now this is 750 or 16 low wheel load, 500 pounds. Here we show the tar profile and it's still perfectly circular and the yellow line shows the uh, soil level. Increasing the wheel load, 1500 pounds, we have indeed developed the flat spot in the middle. Incidentally, this distance here is the soil sinkage. This is the same set of runs except we've double the tar pressure to 24 psi and you see that for the skinny tar the formation of the flat spot is delayed to a much higher load this time over a thousand pounds the fat tar never does actually develop flat spot and its sinkage is lower the whole way through we've now done the same run for the firm sand uh, this time at the low tar pressure 12 psi and the big thing to notice is how much lower the sinkages are. We're here everywhere below half an inch, whereas in the previous one we had sinkages two, three inches. There isn't an awful lot of difference. 
although once a flat spot is formed, the skinny tile actually has slightly lower sinkage than the fat one. I performed the same runs this time for the very weak sand and at tire pressure 12 psi. The behaviour is quite different. We don't get any break point. We get much higher sinkages and the skinny tower always has greater sinkage than the fat tower. And increasing the tire pressure to 24 psi has no effect whatsoever. The tires behave as a rigid wheel at both sets of pressures. We're now looking at the soil resistance for the same set of parameters. So we've got the medium firm clay soil, we've got the low tire pressure, 12 psi. And at low wheel loads, we get higher soil resistance for the skinny tire compared to the fat ones. But after the break point, we then get lower soil resistance. So that can't be bad. We now compute the soil resistance for the firm sand. We get the same general behaviour, but the point to note is that the numbers are very much lower because the sinkage is so much lower. These soil resistances don't include the internal rolling resistance of the tyre itself. And here we have the soil resistance for the very weak sand, again at the reduced tyre pressure. And the resistance curves follow the same characteristics as the sinkage curves. We get much higher soil resistances and the skinny tyre always performs worse than the fatter tyres. Now this behaviour isn't untypical. My land in Portugal has what you might call a good quality loam. In the dry, absolutely no problem whatsoever. And as it gets wetter, the soil is still okay. But as you can see, it's starting to soften up. But when the moisture content gets beyond a certain value, the consistency of the soil turns to thick soup and it's completely undrivable. You do need to be aware of the characteristics of the soil that you're driving over. So that's it then. I hope you've learnt something. I certainly learnt a lot. And to summarise it, the basic lessons I take away. Well firstly, and stating the obvious, your off-road mobility is going to be tremendously affected by the type of soil you're driving over. I have, for example, shown the massive difference between a firm sand and a very soft sand, almost like ball dust. And also, in some cases, the soil properties are massively affected by the moisture content. So be aware of the rainy season. Tire size? Well, I've considered a range of tire sizes, going from OEM skinny tires right up to big fat aftermarket tires. And generally, overall and on balance, the latter do perform better. But there are cases where the skinny tyres have lower sinkage and lower soil resistance. But for me, the big fat tyres don't stack up. They're incredibly heavy, I can hardly lift them. Wheel changing is murder, and they make a big dent in your allowable GVM. And they're expensive too. So for me, I'll stick with the OEM skinny tyres, which are more than adequate in the great majority of situations. And finally, finally tyre pressures. Well, lowering the pressures generally does help when you're driving off-road, but not in every case. If you're driving on a very firm soil, the soil resistance is going to be low in any case, and lowering the tyre pressure doesn't really help. And also, driving on very weak soils, you aren't going to get the deformed shape in the tyre, and the tyre pressure is almost irrelevant. Well, in the next video, I'm going to look at powered wheels. However, this is a whole new ball game. The governing equation is much more complicated, and there's many more different parameters to consider. And to make sense of it all is a much bigger task. I have done the groundwork on this, but I'm not going to commit myself to a release date for that video.